Here's Gilgis Alexander. McCollum staying with him. Spins, gets inside. Left handed off the glass. Oh, what a sweet move. Giddy, tough spot. Back door. What a pass. What a play. And J Dub picks the pocket of Trey Young. He'll take it himself. This is Luke Dart. You're listening to the Uncontested. What is up and welcome to the Uncontested Podcast. Coming to you live Sunday, March 24th as the Thunder just lost a stinker to the, I almost said Minnesota Timberwolves, to the Milwaukee Bucks. We are brought to you by the Blue Wire Podcast Network and Dave's Hot Chicken and Spark OKC. I'm your host for the evening, Jacob Niffin. I got my guy, J.D. Silva, with me tonight. Fellas, I don't want to be around anymore. We've got Justin Peabody. Hello, everybody. We've got Nick Crane. I was hoping Taylor Sander would be used in a fun way tonight. Yeah, I think we should all say Bucks in a really sad way, and that could be the new Sander. <laughs> Nick, you want to kick us off? No. Okay. Bucks. <laughs> Bucks. <laughs> Was that Hank Hill? <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a boy. The Bucks 118 to 93. Dang it, Bobby uh, we will, Portis. We will <laughs> we'll dive into that one here in a moment. Before we do, though, I want to give a big shout out to everyone tuning in live tonight. Even though it was a stinker of a game, we still got a lot of people here in the chat. So thank you so much for tuning in. Get your comments, your questions, uh, your hot takes in because we will be doing Dave's Hot chicken, hot take of the night tonight. We'd love to read some of your hot takes, so fire them off in the chat. Also, while you're here, make sure to drop a like on this video. It would mean a ton to us. If you're listening to the podcast version or watching the YouTube video, probably on Monday, thank you for tuning into the show. We appreciate it. Drop that thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, hit that five-star rating on your podcast platform of choice. We really appreciate it. Trying to ramp up on our way to the NBA playoffs. Regardless of how bad tonight was, we will still be talking about playoff basketball. So do not fret, folks. We've got a lot of talk about tonight, though. We've got this game. Uh, we've got the hot take of the night. We've got a few other segments I'm kind of excited to talk about. Some interesting Western Conference playoff races that are really fun. But let's start with the stinker 118 93 up in Milwaukee. JD, every time we do a post game, we start off with the the theme of the night, the the headline, the biggest talking point. What do you got? I think the Bucks made the Thunder look like little boys. I think that's what I was that's what I was thinking. I had a generally bad time. I've already <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like I need to go journal my thoughts and move on from this one. This was just a tough watch. You know, I was watching the first half while making dinner, and I found myself more and more just not wanting to look at the screen. Uh, it was. What'd you it make? Just, it was just ugly. Oh, I made uh, you know, like a pasta asparagus red You're sauce. A big dish. pasta guy. I am. You know, it's easy. Just throw in a little, the, little pasta boy over here. It. Get about it, uh, <laughs> Jada Silva. I just want to be known that JD just said. This game made me want to go journal, and I heard make me want to go juror, and I thought we were going in a very different direction. I got really worried for a moment. Well, you were uh, you were There's alone in that else. category. I don't think any of us thought we were going there. Uh, JD and the Hogs. To, to be oh goodness, to be fair, <laughs> Silva's point made the Thunder look like little boys. Um, in reality, they kind of are little boys compared to the bucks like we, we talked pregame if you look at the the age of every player there's like a seven year difference across the board yeah. like literally yeah it's a very veteran experienced old team i think yep. uh doing a uh full deconstruction of the made them look like little boys uh joke tonight would be the, the is, is the best way we could have started this this episode uh i think chet's performance honestly kind of uh encapsulates what the whole team went through. Chet was one of 10 uh, from the field, 0 of 5 from three, four rebounds, no assists. Just kind of got, I mean, the, the Bucks present uh, a challenging combination that the Thunder aren't going to find anywhere else, and that's Brooke Lopez and Giannis. And they, and they play a guy, someone who's no longer my guy, I've decided, Bobby Portis also. 
How how yeah. dissimilar is that to Rudy, Cat, and Nas Reed? I, I actually thought about that. And I don't think Cat Cat is the outlier. He does not present <laughs> the same levels of physicality as Giannis does. Like Giannis just oh for sure charges into you every single time. Yeah, yeah. I, I think one thing I guess if we're talking themes, um, like the the discourse around oh this is how you stop the thunder. It's like. Every time the Thunder lose a game like this, Twitter is like, oh, this is what they're going to do in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if that's what you could do in the playoffs or in the regular season, Oklahoma City wouldn't have won 49 of their first, what, 61 games? So is, is that math right? 71 games? Feels uh, right. Uh, basically almost went 50 and 20 to start the year. Secondly, um, what the Bucks did happens every night, like, Pack the paint. Don't let them try to score inside. Uh, play physical with Chet. Don't let Shea drive. The difference is on most nights, they're hitting perimeter shots, so it naturally forces them to alleviate that game plan that they start with and start going out on shooters, and then this drive, the lanes open up on drives. Uh, tonight, the shots were not falling, and so like the ability to clog the lane was bright. So like my big theme or argument to the timeline tonight is what the Bucks did is not that different than what other teams do. It's just they couldn't hit shots to make them change the way they defended the Thunder. That's exactly what my takeaway was going to be, Nick, is it's word a make or miss. Yes. It, it, um, let me start at the top. Uh, no. <laughs> it's a make or miss league. It's a make or miss league. And this team, I feel like more often than not, when we're sitting here after these games that just feel like a stinker, it's because they missed a lot of shots. A lot of shots inside outside take your pick and i think what you said right is this offense is is predicated on being able to make you pay for trying to stop the drives and and if you can't do that then it's a lot easier to to shut down what the thunder want to do is it like sh should we be in crisis mode no does it suck yes like it's a bummer right you want to see them come out and kind of give their best against the best in the nba and the schedule continues to kind of ramp up a little bit so they're gonna have to rebound from this and i think i think they can do so right there there's not these like drastic game plan issues that i see in terms of like like you said nick of oh well there's the blueprint like yeah if the thunder shoot like crap yes they'll probably lose <laughs> and, and they could lose a playoff series if they shoot that poorly for an entire series like yes they, they will lose a playoff series right yeah, for reference, tonight the team shot 37% from the field, 23% from three. Like, just no NBA team is winning with shooting splits like that ever. Yep. Uh, I was on the, the Twitter handle tonight for us, and I thought first half, like, the Thunder defense was really crisp. Dame got nothing until the game was really in hand. Like, the, I thought the Thunder played great defense on Dame. He was one of eight at half. Yeah, I thought the offensive, like, progression was really good. I just think Justin hit the nail on the head. They just did not hit shots. I think their first four or five three-pointers were wide-open looks. Like, great-looking offense generated off driving kick. Really, what the Thunder did was on, on offense was bring the ball down. It felt like the game was really slow, too. I don't know what the fast-break opportunities were for the Thunder, but it felt like it wasn't a lot. So, in half court, they bring the ball up. Whoever Dame is guarding, that guy came and set the screen because the Thunder wanted to go at Damian Lillard every single possession. They would get the switch. They would bully him down into the lane, draw the extra defenders, and spray out to shooters. And guys just didn't hit shots. And I think that's really what it comes down to, Justin. The offensive game plan was... Like, you executed everything except the ball going in the hoop. And sometimes, like, them's just the breaks. That's what happens sometimes. Um, you guys were talking about the blueprint, right? The blueprint, pack the paint, do this, do that. The blueprint has been put a big on Josh Giddy, cheat off of him, and clog that lane even more. The Bucks didn't do that tonight. The Bucks put like Dame on him and then other wings on him. And Josh Giddy went 19, 9, and 8 on 7 of 12 from the floor. Now, the four of six from three is a bit of an anomaly based off of a very large sample size. He doesn't shoot that well. But he was finishing at the rim. He was playing. Like, this might have been 
considering the competition, it's it's hard to like parse this out because the competition was really good, but the game was really bad. So how do we balance that? I thought it's the best Josh has looked in months. Well, it, and his best, the best part of his game was the first half when it was close. So I think it, it yeah. definitely was his best yep. half, like without question. Taylor's trying to talk and is muted. Yeah, your mic's betraying you, Taylor. Uh, I also, to give Milwaukee a little bit of credit, like their defense was abnormally good. Like they they were closing out like their asses were on fire. I've not seen I've not seen many teams close out like that against OKC this season either. Thought they yeah. looked the best when Dame was on the bench. Also, when good old Pat Bev was out there. Pat, Pat Bev. Bev. Hey, TP. It worked. There we it go. It worked. What a disaster. Yes. Taylor's uh, been fighting the live through pod. tech issues. Goodness, like for 10 minutes before the pod and like five minutes after the pod started. I was just going to say, Jacob, you mentioned the fast break points or just the transition opportunities for the Thunder. They had 12 fast break points, even though they forced 16 bucks turnovers. Yeah, just the game just kind of felt like a slog the entire way, especially that first half, which just the first half was an old school fist fight. Like it was just it was ugly as hell. Um, but JD, you just said you thought the Bucks looked their best when Dame was off the court. I kind of tend to agree. Like I thought the Thunder really neutralized Dame offensively and then defensively just like went at him over and over and over again. Now, obviously the Thunder played a horrific offensive game, but again, I thought the process was good. The shots just didn't go in the hoop. Um, I think that's going to be a bit of a problem for the Bucks come playoff time. Like whoever they play is just going to go at Dame over and over and over and over again. The guy's kind of barbecued chicken on the defensive end. That's the blueprint. Really hunting him. Yeah, that's the <laughs> blueprint. It's the theme of this episode: blueprints. The Thunder yeah. were hunting him though. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. they were, they were trying to get him on Shea. Uh, one more takeaway for me: not that I'm sitting here saying that Chet should win Rookie of the Year because he shouldn't. Uh, to be clear, he's been phenomenal, but Wemby's just bonkers. Um, I think tonight shows like the value of his impact when he is on and how he like, we know this team has taken another significant jump from last season. And it's always hard to pin down like how much of that's Chet versus like Shea taking a leap and Dub taking a leap and the, the team playing together for another year and the consistency and the chemistry. Um, a game like tonight where I'm going to, do like a what was it a compliment sandwich? Um, <laughs> Chet was awful, but I think it shows like when he's on, this team is like really hard to beat. When he's off, they're awful. Like he had he, no dog in him tonight, like no physicality. It just looked lost. Like there was times where he had a, a nice little floater, could have gone at someone's chest and was like kicking out to three pointers. Just didn't look like himself. Um, and the Thunder were horrible because of it. Um, not just because of him, but I think that swing that you see in a player speaks to the impact that they have on a on an individual roster. You guys mentioned. Nick, just, hold on, just so we're clear, the compliment sandwich goes the other way, where it's compliment, <laughs> like <laughs> criticism, compliment. Not That's what I did. Crit- criticism, it felt, it compliment, felt a lot criticism, like criticism, <laughs> compliment in the middle, then more right. criticism at the end. I said, which Chet I think is fair for tonight. Chet has been phenomenal this season, and then I said he was awful tonight but that speaks to his impact and how good he is because he swings the team Touché. maybe it was more like a compliment lasagna because there, i think there's a lot of layers. <laughs> there's a lot of layers yeah. Seven which i think is fair dip. for tonight yeah. chet obviously struggled and i think one reason jacob you mentioned the bucks not sending out books uh not sending out a center to guard i'm <laughs> kidding i have to do it can we get a sad one taylor books Oh God! Uh, Please clip that. <laughs> Justin was uh, Hank Hill uh, for his. I missed that. Dang it, Bobby uh, Porter! My technical difficulties. Yeah, it's like ingrained in my head now. I'm sure it's ingrained in the, the Give us listener's more. head as well. <laughs> like a sad bucks or just like a bucks bucks. Give us a different Country spin bucks. on bucks I haven't seen yet. <laughs> oh man, that's I. I only have like one gimmick. It's an angry it's bucks. 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 Well, think about it and just drop it at some random point in the show tonight. Bucks. <laughs> you guys are so great at just making my points just completely be meaningless because of <laughs> other nonsense <laughs> i was going to reiterate jacob's point about the bucks not 
kidding. Say like Bucks now. <laughs> Not guarding Josh with a center because I thought Brooke, Brooke Lopez did such a great job with Chet, taking him out of the game immediately due to his versatility, being able to guard him on the perimeter and also being able to just be an inferior paint presence down low. Chet got absolutely bullied. And that kind of goes back to a bigger thing that I didn't get to touch on. You all did a good job of, of doing so. But when the Thunder aren't hitting those outside shots, I think that is why we saw players like Chet and Shea both struggle a lot offensively tonight. I saw a lot of tweets about, why isn't Shea trying to get to the rim? And my counter argument is he was early, but the Bucks were just absolutely packing the paint. He had no opportunity to when he's being surrounded by Brooke Lopez and like two other wings, whoever it may be. And that kind of led to him getting frustrated, being a little, um, I don't know, starting to be a little more passive, forcing shots from outside. Like it just completely threw him and Chet off of their respective games. But if the Thunder were able to hit some of those outside shots early, which they obviously weren't able to, that opens up the floor so much for guys like Chet and Shea and allows them to play their game, allows his team to be able to push the ball in transition, things of that nature. And we just didn't see that at all tonight. I have a question for you guys because this is a point that I feel like we've talked about a lot and I feel like tonight is the perfect example to bring it up. I think Nick was the original, like uh, the originator of this point. And so I'd be interested to hear your answer as well, Nick. Gordon Hayward, we talked about, can do a little bit of everything, isn't trying to force himself on this team, is really taking the back seat. But he's a guy that when you need him to score, like he's got a very long history of being able to do so. Tonight felt like the night where no one else can hit a shot and you need Gordon to get in there and get aggressive with his offense and get some shots up. Tonight he was, let me get it pulled up here, 14 minutes, zero of three from three, um, two rebounds, three assists, one turnover. So three shots in 14 minutes, which is actually, I think, a little bit better than his shots per minute average so far. <laughs> Which is bad. That's yeah. so bad. Like, what about where, shots per where, 75, where, shots per 100? Give us some more. Like, <laughs> where, where are you I guys assume it gets worse with, with Gordon and what we're seeing from him. Because tonight felt like the night, hey, everything else sucks. Someone needs to go out there and just try, like, do something, like, get some shots up. <clears throat> and Gordon, again, like, he had the play again where the ball got swung to him for an open three. He doesn't even look at the rim. He just immediately shuffles it to Josh in the corner. Josh hit the three, and credit to Josh. But like, shoot the damn ball, my guy. Where where are you guys at with the Gordon Hayward uh, situation? It's I'll be uh, surprised uh, if we get anything meaningful out of Gordon at this point. I think that you, you know we we mostly you Jacob <laughs> held on to this hope that like. Uh, you know, he was deferring or just fitting in. I, I, I don't know. Like you said, tonight felt like a good night to show off a bit. If you had it, if you got it, flaunt it. He didn't flaunt it. Maybe he don't got it. <laughs> My argument to that, two arguments, because I'm, I'm, maybe it's me, not Jacob, that still has belief that he can help this team in the playoffs. Okay, fair. Um, and maybe it's Jacob too. I think two things. One. If he had the green light to go out there and get the shots up, nothing's working, go out there and hoist. Um, that's one thing. But I don't know if like he has the green light to do so. Like we yeah. on this podcast outside of the organization, it's like tonight's the night, go chuck it. Like <laughs> you gotta have the kind of green light from your coach to do so. I don't know if he does. Totally. Um, another thing, like played 14 minutes. If that was mostly the first half, and I'm not sure it was, um, it was a close game. Like, I don't think it was time to chuck it and see what worked. Like you were, you were in it, right? Third quarter. If you played a lot of third quarter minutes, I'd have to go back and like, look at the stats. I don't know if you did like, that's probably a good time to chuck it when you're down 17. Um, the other thing is it's easier said than done. Like just go yeah. in there, Gordon and make tonight the night that you scored all these points. Like that's hard. It's unfair so, to judge him. Is, like yeah, on not tonight. go score the points, but, at least take more than three freaking shots. Yeah, you got to be a threat on the offensive side of the ball, and we haven't seen that from Gordon at all outside of creating for teammates. And the, I think the best thing from the Gordon Hayward trade might be that Josh Giddy felt some pressure and is now a hooping. 
True. Like that might be the benefit of the Josh <laughs> or the the Gordon Hayward trade at this point. And also they create a lot of cap space, which is something we'll mm-hmm. talk more about coming into the off season. But my thing with Hayward, and I will save a lot of this for later on the podcast for a, a, a upcoming segment. I'm just kind of to the point where I feel like the Hayward minutes are a little forced right now. And I, I just continue to wonder uh, if they should go elsewhere. For example, in the second quarter, when you plug in Aaron Wiggins with those lineups, obviously Shea's off the court, but the offense just flowed so much better, even if Wiggins isn't necessarily playing better. Uh, and that's just something that stood out to me a lot over the past couple of weeks. I think you don't have to look much further than, right, we talk about um, fit and opportunity. And Nick, you bring up a great point of like, that just may not be the team's vision for Gordon. I don't really know what the team's vision is for Gordon, but like all you have to do is go look at Mitzich and Trey Mann in Charlotte and what they've been doing compared to what they did in Oklahoma city. It's not that they suddenly turned into a different player. The second they stepped off the plane in, in Charlotte, it's that the opportunity and what they're being asked to, to do is totally different. I think the same is true in the inverse of Gordon Hayward. I don't know that he'll be asked to do more. If he does and he can, that's great. I just I just don't know what they want him to do. I think that's fair. Where he is, you're running out of time before the end of the season to figure that out. Yeah. Because the playoffs are a little over three weeks away. That's like, going to work. They'll, they'll be here before you know it. Actually, I guess a month away because at the end of the regular yeah. season, there will be a, a little bit more than a week off because of the play-in games. So, Qu- Question before we wrap this up. Has there been a game this year where you felt the reason Oklahoma City won was because Gordon Hayward played? No. I don't think there's ever going to be a game where I'm going to say they won or lost because of Hayward just because that typically falls on your biggest guys. But there's yeah. been games where I think he's been like very impactful and helpful. Reason I ask, uh, this team entering tonight was number one in the West, and Gordon Hayward hasn't won a game for the Thunder. So, like, does it matter? They gave up yep. next to nothing to acquire him. If I get, like, how dare you? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> like, we probably are spending too much time talking about Hayward in that regard, especially when you think about the uh, the cap space that, that would clear in the offseason if they decide to move on. We'll all be singing a different tune whenever they use that cap space to go sign Paul George this summer. <laughs> Holy hell. PG back to OKC. Let's take our first break of the night. Now that we're done talking about the dumpster fire in Milwaukee, we'll move on to another section right after this short commercial break. And we are back. And since we are back, it's time for everybody's favorite segment of the week. Dave's Hot Chicken Hot Takes. The East Hollywood pop-up sensation turned fast casual superstar Dave's Hot Chicken is now serving Oklahoma in Bricktown, Edmond, and soon coming in Chisholm Creek. Very soon, actually. I had a fan of the show tell me today, hey, I was at Top Golf in Chisholm Creek, that Dave's is almost open. So if you're on the north side, be on the lookout. Their mouth-watering sliders and tenders are offered at seven spice levels, ranging from no spice all the way to Reaper, which Nick and Taylor have experience with. Each piece of hand-breaded chicken is spiced to order using a blend crafted specifically for its heat level or no spice at all, along with sides of house-made kale slaw, creamy mac and cheese, and crispy seasoned fries. And you can now try the new Dave's Not Chicken. Those are cauliflower slices that taste just like Dave's Hot Chicken, but they're not. They're here for all you uh, veggie-friendly folks. Visit Dave's Hot Chicken in Bricktown right next to Fuzzy's Taco Shop before or after the next Thunder home game. There are two home games this week, so make your way out to Dave's Hot Chicken. Gentlemen, it's time for the Dave's Hot Chicken Hot Take of the Week. For all of you who are tuned into the live stream right now, drop your hot takes of the week in the comments section. Title it Hot Take so we can uh, star it and come back to them momentarily. Who wants to kick us off this week? With your hot take of the week. I see Silva over there scheming. Maybe Taylor's got another Gordon Hayward's going to score 20. (laughs) That's what I was just going to say. That's right. Who's going to fire off the That will get me back to Reaper level. Just like my dub over shape, which is looking great since I fired off that take, by the way. Oh, my God. Uh, I'll I'll get us started here. Yeah. Is is it? 
this kind of <laughs> paints a picture of how I feel about this player at this point, but I almost feel like my hot take could be a Gordon Hayward related prediction. Oh boy. <laughs> it's not going to be, it's not going to be, I won't be tempted by, by that. Uh, instead, <laughs> our, uh, a guy we loved for a long time and still love somewhat Isaiah Joe. <laughs> he has been, uh, really struggling, uh, offensively for more than a month now. It feels like it's just been a while. Been a while. Been a while. <laughs> Yes. So how about we get a Isaiah Joe is going to hit seven. No, 10 of his next 15 threes. Woo! I've been OK, so I've been brewing this for a while. And by a while, I mean four hours. <laughs> My numbers have changed. It was a scoring total. It was a percentage how about 10 of the next 15. Love it. I'll get the extra hot. Okay. 10 and 15 feels like a lot, but I love it. I'll go hot. 10 of 15. Yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot. He, it's he doable, did do though. something fairly, oh. yeah, fairly similar early in the season. But since then, we have not seen the same. Extra as hot. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, I'm going extra, extra hot as well. Three extra hots. All right. It's not like absurd though, because obviously we know with shooters like Isaiah Joe, they can turn it on. Um, but that is a lot of shot attempts. I'm not signing the waiver, but I'm sweating a little bit when it's done. <laughs> like this is a tough one. <laughs> I I'll go next because I also have a Isaiah Joe hot take. <laughs> so, I think that the, the theme the theme with this segment is like, what do you really want to happen? And we're going to speak into existence. That's right. Dave's hot manifestations. (laughs) (laughs) So Isaiah Joe is going to win a playoff game for this team with a 30 plus point performance. (laughs) Hello. Hello. We're talking like the infamous coming out party. That he did in Dallas two years ago. I'm talking that level of. Did he score 30 in that game? No, no, but he only scored 30. He he only played like (laughs) 10 minutes in that game. You're guaranteed four games. Wow, you're the the most. (laughs) I'm I'm doing the math here. Uh So you're saying Isaiah Joe's gonna have the best game of his career, score 30, and win a game for the Thunder at some point during a stretch that could be as little as four games. Correct. That is Reaper, my (laughs) friend. I will be signing that waiver. How many how many 30 plus point games does Isaiah Joe have in his NBA career? Do you have it pulled up? I do have it pulled up. One. Two. I would also guess one. I mean, I kind of wanted to say zero. Do it. Uh, I'll go zero. One. Damn it. He scored 33 once. Who this was is, it? Yeah. So who was it against? Yeah. Uh it was. March 28th, 2023, in a loss to the Charlotte Hornets. That was that home game against the Hornets where P.J. Washington looked like prime uh, LeBron James. (laughs) He went 11 of 18 from the field, uh, 6 of 11 from three. He had 33 points, two rebounds, and an assist. March 28th, 2023. Sounds like we're due. That's what that sounds like to me. My take on this one is not only is this Reaper, it is Reaper where they don't even put the sauce on the damn tender. They just give you the sauce and you just like snort it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Unbelievable. Oh. Is that, do I or, want a prize for that? Or it's, it's Reaper where, lucky me, they gave me twice the amount of chicken that I ordered with that specific spice on it. Correct. You got to eat two tenders, not one. Speaking of snorting that like hot spice or whatever they put on it, Nick and I were <laughs> we're speaking of what? after leaving. Snort it. He, Jacob said they, that's like snorting. I know, but where are you going spice. with this? Yeah. Is this a I'm dune saying reference? That Nick and I were tweet or we're texting each other afterwards, and we're like, yeah, it. Uh, we don't really feel the burn anymore in our mouths, but like still kind of have it in our nostrils after accidentally like rubbing our noses and stuff. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That stuff lingers. I, I thought this was going in a totally different direction. I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> didn't want to know. Yeah, All right. We got two Isaiah point. Joe hot takes so far. I've got the spice level. I've got oh, we said Reaper, right? Kidding. It's it's Reaper. It's not oh, very yeah. that's that's <laughs> Reaper. Uh also, Isaiah Joe's shooting 29% for three in March. I yeah, not good. Not good. 
Good thing the playoffs uh, are in April. Yes, good sir. thing. Good thing. <laughs> so, my hot take is a question for you guys. I'm going to give you two scenarios that I think are possible. And I want you to tell me which one is hotter on the scale. Okay. In the first round, the Oklahoma City Thunder will play blank. The two options, which one's hotter? Houston Rockets, LA Clippers. Ooh, I like that. I think hmm. hotter so would be the Clippers for this them to is, fall that much. This is a hot take on will the Clippers jump? No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Well, the, the Rockets no. jump or the Clippers and the Thunder slip. Yeah, right. my my hypothetical is like Thunder three six three six and Rockets are one eight probably or two seven. I guess they couldn't be seven. That's that'd be eight. So that'd be, it'd be one eight. So do you think the Thunder would be one and the Rockets win the play in with two wins, or do you think the Thunder would fall to three and the Clippers fall to six? What's more likely? I think it is much more likely that it's Thunder Rockets than it is Thunder Clippers. Agreed. Really. I would say the Clippers falling would be extra hot using the scale where the oh. Rockets rising would be hot given what we've seen over the past couple of weeks. The Clippers are currently, so if you look at the Clippers are fourth, the Suns are sixth. There is two and a half games, which is a lot to cover with how, many, how few games are remaining, but at this rate, is it crazy? I don't, being, crazy that be three, three, six six yeah. I don't think it's crazy that it could be a 3-6 matchup. I don't think it's crazy that it could be a 3-6 matchup. I just, I have less faith that a team like in the 6-7-8 slot is going to play good enough to jump the Clippers. Even though the Clippers are at 500 basketball yeah. since the break, I don't think any of those other teams are like getting hot. At this point in the season, I kind of feel like teams are what they've shown us they are for the entire season. And I just don't see the the Suns or the Kings or the Mavs making that jump. Is Harden going to keep playing defense on Kawhi? Got it. Right, so. <laughs> Good grief. The ideal scenario, though, <laughs> is... I can't believe I'm about to say this. You do get Houston in the first round because you stay in that one slot. And that means you got a chance to play the Clippers in the second round. Like, Zach or Lowe the said the other day that the Thunder don't match up well with the Clippers. And I really respect Zach Lowe, and that blew my freaking mind. I think the Thunder would smoke the Clippers. Really? I think they match up better with the Clippers than anyone else in the top five. I'd rather the Clippers and the Pelicans, like, any day. I would, too. I'm just not that confident. (laughs) (laughs) I'm with you probably of the teams in the top four. I think the Clippers is who I'd want. But I wouldn't like feel good about it. You like you wouldn't pick the Thunder to win that series? Uh, not. With I think it's a six or confidence. seven game I mean, series. I mean, it, yeah, I, I like. Do I think they would win, or do I think they have a chance to win? Absolutely. Uh, if I'm sitting there at a Vegas sports book, am I like slapping down my money, saying, <laughs> "Would you rather like, Clippers or we're getting off topic here? Would you rather Clippers or Lakers <laughs> in a playoff series? Lakers match up better, but I'm still going." Lakers. Is it at least a conversation though? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a conversation. There's there's nobody in the top ten right now that I feel good about, to be fair. That's kind of my thoughts. Nobody in the top ten. I'm like, I think the flip side is true too, though, that there's nobody in the top ten that's saying, like, oh my god, I hope we draw the OKC Thunder. That would be an easy playoff series. Like besides all ten of their fan bases, yes. Yeah. One hundred percent. The teams themselves, (laughs) yes. That kind of leads me to my hot take. I had I think the Thunder need to rush Shea this week for at least a game or two. Uh and I looked up the last five games uh of his compared to the season as a whole. The last five games aren't as good as his regular season stats. Shocker, but they're still pretty damn good because it's Shea. But all that being said, you guys mentioned like playoff seating. I think about the playoff seating. I know Jacob, you were mentioning in the Slack, and I agree with this completely. Being able to hold on to that one seed. I think getting a Pelicans or a Clippers in the second round seems a lot better than the alternative. But at the same time, the Thunder aren't playing their best basketball right now. And I don't think they have been for the past two weeks or so. And I think that's largely led by a subpar Shea to his standards, the MVP standards that we've become accustomed to this season. And the West is just such a gauntlet 
like I don't think there's that much discrepancy between playing like the Lakers versus the Clippers or whatever it may be. Um, and I just think when the Thunder are playing their best basketball, like we saw heading into the all-star break, they can beat any of those teams in the seven game series. I'd rather have a, a 100% healthy OKC Thunder team led by Shea and J dub rather than this team that we've seen over the past two weeks. So that's kind of where I got that. I I'll give a thought before I give a rating. Uh, I don't know if I agree that he needs to rest if he doesn't. I mean, he, he was hobbling around a lot tonight. Um, and I know I he doesn't want to rest. That's another. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think that you're on to something like. I know. We generally are pretty like positive on this podcast. Uh, last two weeks, Shea has not been MVP caliber at all. Like he's been great, like. Better than I thought Shea Gilders Alexander would ever be three years ago but he's not been MVP caliber. And I don't know if that's like maybe Taylor onto something. He's, you know, fight through injuries. I'd argue Physical, every guy, mental, every guy at this point in the season is probably in the same boat. Um, but he definitely has not been MVP SGA that we saw for a, a good chunk of the season for sure. So I'll say hot. Like, I don't think he needs to rest. Like, could he use it? Sure. I don't think he needs it. I'm kind of with Nick. I'm so resting two games this week. I'm going to go hot on this one. Like he does look tired, but I don't think it's going to happen. Right. I think I, I'd go medium myself, which is, you know, not, not that much, not that much different. I hope, I kind of hope that it, it comes in taking care of business against teams that are not so great. The few games you get against those teams that are not so great down the stretch of the season. And maybe you just play less minutes those nights. It'd be cool with that. But I don't. I don't think he wants to rest. I don't think he. I don't think he will choose to rest unless something happens. It feels like he's hobbling at the end of every game right now. I think this is Reaper. I don't think Ooh, there's any chance there we Shea rests this week at all. I think if he rests, it's going to be the end of the season. Last week, yeah. And 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 the keyword there is rest versus like injury report says like thigh or because like, something. I don't even totally think that right. happens. You don't think there's don't, any chance that he pops no. up with injury report is questionable this week? No. Okay. I, I, I don't disagree. I'm just saying, like, re, you framed it as rest. It's very different than... Yeah, I mean, the Thunder are never going to sit there. I don't know. That's not how they do things. It, it'll be, uh, you know, left pinky toe abrasion, and <laughs> he'd do whatever. I, I like how Justin interpreted this, um, because I, I said I think the Thunder need to rest him, which is why I think I got the responses from Nick and Jacob and JD compared to Justin, I left that kind of uh, open for that. Choose reason. your words wisely, Taylor. That's like, that's what I did. I, I wanted mixed reactions. Justin, you want to take us through some of the fan hot takes of the week? Yeah, we got a few. Um, wow. Let's start with some doom and gloom from Dorla. Hot take, Thunder actually get out of the first round, LOL. <laughs> Guessing this isn't a reaction to the game tonight. Where are you guys putting this That's one? fair. Mild. They're doing I feel the good about them getting out of the first round. Like I really do. Even if it's the Lakers, which like everyone's so uptight about it possibly being the Lakers. I like them in a Lakers series. I like I really like them in a Warriors series. Um we'll talk about it here in a bit. If the Rockets do sneak in, I like them in a Rocket series. If it's Denver or sorry, if it's Dallas, that one scares me. I, I feel good about the first round. I agree. All right. We'll see. Building off Taylor's take, Dwayne Thomas says Shea doesn't score 30 once this week. Ooh. I give Four that extra hot. on the schedule. It's a pretty damn Reaper. Yeah. That's, yeah. He'll get that's Four games. He's averaging 30. I think that's I mean, he's, he is 100%. He scored 31 on the dot like a quarter of the games this year. And so right. he might Even score 31 on the dot in yeah. his next four. Yep. Next up from Sean Hot Take, Tim McMahon says we're one traditional power forward away from being the best team in the league. What is yeah. a traditional power forward? That makes me think of like prime Taj Gibson. And I'm just not there. 
Why does that that you... that was a name, Taylor? Yeah, it, Taj yeah. Gibson. That's a traditional power. Forward. You guys remember Prime <laughs> Taj Taj Gibson? What? Is a traditional On big power forward. Another big who plays alongside a big center who can't yeah. space the floor, or create for others, but gets Zach points Randolph. Around. Yeah, I I I totally agree with you, Taylor. Just of all the just names talk. to pull for you to go, Taj Gibson. My NBA knowledge is very like. Tunnel vision, OKC. Okay, that is all they need. Prime Daniel Orton. <laughs> if only they had Nerlens Noel. <laughs> well, that's not a power forward, but I, I appreciate no, I the, the reference. <laughs> Do I agree? So with we this? agree. How hot is this? How hot is Tim via Sean? It's pretty is, hot. Is this a? Is this like an inside joke? Does Tim McMahon say things like this? He does, but it, it, it wasn't in the context that he said this. I think he strongly believes it. He thinks the Thunder need, like, I don't know. I mean, P.J. Washington, maybe, although P.J.'s been terrible for He's the not, I, I don't think he qualifies as the tradition. I think they are a good power forward away from being yeah, arguably, like, just a perennial top two, three team in the league. Mm-hmm. But the, Gordon, the power forward I think of is, like, not Siakam, but in the vein of a Siakam yeah. or an OG, and a guy that can move the ball, who can hit threes, who's jumbo sized and can defend. Right. I'm not looking for some son of a bitch to take 20 posts up a game. Yeah, that's not traditional. Right. <laughs> well, that, is, that is traditional. That is that's traditional. not what they need. That's what I mean. Yeah. I meant um, <laughs> David West. Right. Yeah, they're not going. <laughs> We're pulling with, out some names with, here. David uh, West, uh, the, the, the elbow, the elbow sleeve. Yeah. Yes, Carlos Boozer. <laughs> there right. you go. Last oh. but not least, Brendan, hot take. Thunder take another guard in this next draft. <laughs> I'll get that medium. Sam's always going to take the best player available that they like, regardless of position. Go no on. clue where they're going to be picking at. But yeah, this is like a, a mile to me. Like. If they like a guard, they'll go get a guard. Yeah, I'll probably go medium. But they're going to draft a guy that can handle the ball and play on the wing. And you could call him a guard, you can call him a forward, whatever. It's going to be a guy that plays on the wing if if it is this. A lot of comments in the chat, speaking of them taking a guard, about how they need a big because it ignites like tonight. You know what a big does? A traditional big? Close to the paint. You know what happened tonight? Whenever they ran zero traditional bigs, clog the paint. Yeah. <laughs> like the traditional big will do nothing but hurt this offense, not help it. Got to hit those outside shots. So Ryan Anderson. He's going to spit out power forward names the rest of the pod. The rest this of the pod. Just randomly. Doing, just sure. This is like power the, forward meme. Names. Sure. the meme that's like guys will just sit around and name random yes, old athletes yes. all night. Yeah. Brandon in, Mass. In real life. <laughs> I was about to say Lamar Odom, but honestly, Lamar would be awesome on this team. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Lamar, Lamar was incredible until he started smoking crack. That's a different story. Um, hate when that happens. <laughs> I thought we should take some time tonight. This has been, like, regard. it feels like it's even more applicable tonight after, like, a bad game. This has been an incredible season. A season that, like, literally nobody predicted. This team, Sam Presti talked about, how when it comes to making the playoffs, they want it to be an arrival, not an appearance. This team has, a, has arrived. Like, they are here. They have made a resounding statement throughout the league. And we've got to cover it every step of the way, which is awesome. But most of our talks this season, rightfully so, have revolved around the big three. Right? Chet, Dub, and Shea. Rightfully so, one has been an absolutely incredible rookie. One has had a second-year breakout that has us all thinking he's going to be a multi-time All-Star. And the third is currently second in the MVP voting. Like, of course the conversation revolves around those three. But I wanted to spend tonight talking a little bit about some of the unsung heroes. Some of the role players, whether it be their, their timely production on the court, or the vibes they provide that has just made this team so much fun. I wanted to give those guys some shine tonight. So each of us, I think, have a role player we want to chat about. We can talk for a couple minutes about each one. 
But tonight is a night where we celebrate the guys that aren't scoring 30 a night and dropping highlight dunks and uh, up for major awards. JD, why don't you kick us off? Let's talk about Lugans Dort. He has been kind of everything we had hoped he would be from a, a shot diet point of view for the last two seasons at least when he kind of was taking shots that would make us close our eyes and shake our head and wish for more. He could have gone, he, he, there were two paths he could have gone down. This was one. The other one was like Dylan Brooks. And, and fortunately he did not do that. He, he reeled it in. Mark has, Mark has said over and over again that he's, they didn't have to tell him to do it. He just did it. Like he consulted with his own people and he chose to go this route and shoot because of these better shots he's taking. He's shooting 40% from three on like five attempts a game. Um, he's just great. Like he plays, he plays good defense every single night, obviously with Jada. He and Jada are, uh, just a nightmare for opposing for opposing offenses uh, every night, and yeah, yeah, Ludort really we really had no issues. Like he'll have his off nights; he's still streaky, but it's been hard for for me to find nights to complain about Lou. I've got some receipts. Uh, I've, I've heard wow. some earpods. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll add on to that. I think Lou uh, his defensive impact goes beyond what he does. Um, this is not, I don't think this is something that like dubs talked about or Mark's talked about, but I would be shocked if guys like Jalen Williams and SGA and others improving on the defensive end wasn't because they see a guy like Lou do what he does and like model what he does, you know, like half of half of defense is effort intensity and like heart. And I think that Lou's a guy that like, they always like the friend group you surround yourself with is like who you end up being. And I think that Lou just being like the locker room guy and the, and the defender that he is on the court, it just like, it turns I unfortunately into- uh, surrounded myself with Nick in high school. And that's why I turned out the way I am. I was about to say, but it's a good point. you are your friend group, that's why I'm such an asshole is because I'm on this podcast <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> just kidding. I love all of you. That's a great, that's a great analogy. Point. I also think it frees up the way Lou, it, again, it's contagious uh, in regards to his uh, tenacity and the way he gets after the ball, like you mentioned. But it also frees up players like Shea to play a little more of a free safety role. And I think that's a large reason why we've seen some more of those steals this season. I think that's, uh, you bring up good points there. I also think about Lou's three point shooting. Uh, again, I'm not sure how this looks over the past week, but leading into the week, uh, post All Star break, he was leading the league in three point percentage which is just absurd uh he's been fantastic in that regard and i love what you mentioned him honing in those shots um even when he is driving silva it's not nearly as uncontrolled as it was where we were accustomed to him just throwing something off the backboard much more controlled leading to him either getting to the free throw line or completing uh field goal attempts around the rim so yeah lou's been fantastic I'm also going to lose a bet I have with uh, Nick. <laughs> so I'll be writing a love poem about Lou Dort and uh, reading it. Yes. Oh, yes, I love that. That's great. I didn't know that was a payoff. I forgot about that. Yeah. It's a Lou Dort will make the all defense team. I just, I don't think that's going to, I don't think it's going to happen. So look forward to that, audience. Right, what kind of poem are you going to write a haiku? No. no that can't be a haiku. haiku. Yeah. It says write a short love poem about Lou and read it on the pod. So expect that. <laughs> One of our off-season pods. We got to come up with some great background music as JD sure. reads the poem. Sure, <laughs> it's got to be like music. like some music that really like sets the mood and oh yeah, oh, yeah. it's gonna be, it's gonna be yeah. great. Get Jackson. the right lighting. And and I don't feel bad making it really awkward for you because you did not do half of your bets from last year. So oh, of course, correct. Of Still course. do for some charges at Paycom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, Justin, who's, who's your guy? My guy is Jay Will. <laughs> you got it. Like the dog doing get before we even dive into anything that he's actually done on the court. Like the dogs after the games in the post game interviews, it's an all timer. We're going to be talking about them in a decade from now. Like we're going to always remember this season for that, if nothing else. So I appreciate like, you were talking about how Lou sets the culture. Jay will is a culture setter. You can see it like his smile is infectious. The joy that he brings, you can't beat it on the court. We know what he does. 
right? He's like a, a walking stereotype for the guy who takes charges. And unlike some people on Twitter.com that want to ban the charge, it ain't banned, and he's taking advantage of it. NBA leaderboard, charges drawn per 36. You know who number one is in the entire NBA? It's Jalen Jay Will. You know what else is weird? There's two other Thunder guys in the top 10 that I did not know Ooh. this until I looked up the stat. Do you guys Can know who guess? they are? Yeah. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaah Joe. Joe. Isaiah Joe. And Rich Blue. Williams. Ken Rich Williams. Boom. Isaiah still, Joe is number still five. Top of the offensive fouls drawn. Just maybe not charges. Correct. Yeah. Lou gets like a moving screen. That's a great like point. Like 1.5 per game. Yeah. Yeah. Nuts. Uh, another stat that Jay Will was a lot higher than I anticipated him to be when I looked it up is a defensive rating per 100 possessions. Let me look at it now. Jay Will is third. Number one is Chet. Number two is Olivier Sar, which we should probably throw out given the sample size. Omitted. So like Chet, then Jay Will in terms of D rating on this team. I think that's that that says a lot about his impact on this team of like he may not be racking up blocks because he's taking charges like his stats may not always jump off the page but the defensive rating that he's bringing to the table and and setting this team up for success when chet's off the floor or sometimes together i think that that like you can talk all you want about uh, how this team needs a traditional big but right now jay will's filling that role really nicely post all-star break we've seen a lot more jay will almost every game uh, coming in, backing up Chet in that center role, quote unquote center role. And sometimes we've seen some small ball lineups, obviously, but I love that you brought up those stats in comparison to Chet and Jay will, because I keep coming back to that double big lineup. That's what we're calling it. Even though it's maybe the more modern double medium, double medium. Yeah. I like that double medium. <laughs> um, and we haven't seen a ton of it here down the stretch of the regular season. I think maybe I'm wrong. I think there's a reason for that. I think we will see more of that in the playoffs, depending on obviously a opponent matchup. But that's something I'm looking forward to seeing more of come playoff time. Yeah. It's Justin, hilarious. I thought you hit the nail on the head. Like Jay Will is first team all teammate. <laughs> like the vibes, yes. like he he is the ringleader of the bench mob. Yep. Uh he's just he's incredible. He's ab- always he's, smiling. Yep. He's one of the I don't know if there's ever been a Thunder player that has been so much fun to watch when he's not on the court. Just like everything he does, he's just constantly gassing guys up. The the you mentioned the post game barking, but the pregame, as the the lineups have been announced and Nick Gallo is doing a sideline interview, there's one guy that comes over there and, and massages the shoulders and slaps him a few times before going getting in the high five lineup, and that's Jay Will. Like. He, his energy is absolutely infectious. Um, he's a he's he's a blast. He's an absolute blast. That was I agree. Really awkward pause. <laughs> I have one. I picked none other than Aaron Wiggins. Going to be completely honest with, with you guys. Uh, when I picked him earlier today, I was thinking when I dove into the stats that they were going to back this up. Unfortunately, they did not quite do that. I won't read all of them off. Um, his 67.3% true shooting percentage is a career high on a career low 4.1 field goal attempts. Uh, his player efficiency rating is right there at average of right around 15. His on-off stats, I looked up uh, per clean of the glass. They aren't great. In fact, they are uh, not great enough. That I'm not even going to mention them. However... Stats aren't going to help me out here, but I think the intangibles that Wiggins brings night in and night out continue to impact this team significantly. It's kind of like what Nick was alluding to with Lou Dort, the intensity that he brings on both ends of the floor is infectious, I think, for this team. I think the offense moves more freely. I think a great example of that is the difference between the end of the first quarter and the second when you subbed out Gordon Hayward for Aaron Wiggins. And I almost think we need to focus a little more. It's kind of what I was getting at earlier. I see this team really trying to get Hayward more comfortable, thinking he can be a big piece come playoff time. But I wonder if we should be focusing more, or the team should be focusing more on getting Wiggins comfortable yet again, like we saw prior to the, the Hayward trade. And like, for example, we saw Wiggins with some of those lineups at the end of the first quarter with Shea still playing. 
since that trade, we usually see him coming in at the beginning of the second quarter. We don't see him a lot with those starters, although we do sometimes down the stretch. Even though the stats don't quite back it up, I would like to see more Wiggins, more investment in Wiggins. I don't think we've seen a ton of that this season in comparison to somebody like a Gordon Hayward who really hasn't been performing very well. Yeah, he makes momentum swinging plays. Even if he's not scoring a ton, feels like every shot that he makes is an important shot, a big shot, an energizing shot. For a while, that was Isaiah Joe this season, and now it's kind of Aaron Wiggins. And yeah, I'm with you. I, I wish you'd play more. And, you know, we'll see. It'll be night tonight. The one stat you didn't mention, 100% chance of saving basketball. <laughs> that is right. That's what he does. This is true. Seems to always come up in clutch moments. Not necessarily in the clutch, but throughout the majority right. of the game. Right. right. He's been great. I think he will get a lot of playoff burn. Like, I think he's a guy that you can really trust who is incredibly versatile. To get him, what was he, the fifth to last pick, fourth to last pick in the draft? Like, Presti's ability to, like, find value in the second round has been so integral to filling out role players for this team that it's no surprise they stack up so many second-round picks because look at their success rate. And Wiggins is a guy who's, like, never complained about his role has always been a team player. He's just been awesome. Yep. Three great role players. Been very impactful this season. I just thought they deserved some due, so I'm glad we got to chat about them. Let's take a break. On the other side, we will talk a little bit about the Western Conference standings and make our predictions of the week. We will be right back. And we are back. Gentlemen, Let's talk Western Conference playoff picture because it's getting a little funky. We've got four races happening in the West right now. Race number one is for the number one seed. That would include the Thunder, the Nuggets, and the Wolves, who are all within a game of each other. Race number two is for the four seed, where the Clippers are now only a half game up on the Pelicans. It feels almost locked that Clippers-Pelicans is going to be the 4-5 matchup. Just who gets the home court there. Race number three is who gets out of the play-in. We have the Suns, the Kings, and the Mavericks all within half a game of each other. And then unlikely race number four is who misses the postseason altogether. That race includes the Los Angeles Lakers, the Golden State Warriors, and the Houston Rockets. After tonight, the Rockets are three games out of ninth against the Lakers, and the Lakers are currently playing basketball. And only one game out from 10th with the Golden State Warriors. We've talked about the race for number one to death. I do not want to spend a lot of time on the 4-5 race, so I'm just going to ask you quickly. If it's Clippers, Pelicans, and 4-5, who do you think is the four, and who do you think is the five? I kind of think the Pelicans, with the way they've been playing, the momentum they have, even with B.I. being out, like they have been... But it's Zion. Zion has finally awoken as a basketball player, it seems like, and he is uh, looking like his, his Duke self and what we thought he'd be in the NBA. I, I kind of think it would be them. And, you know, there's quotes coming out of the Clippers, like, we, we don't have an identity right now. That's just not what you want to see. <laughs> James Harden didn't stick around for post-game availability. Yeah. Uh, count me as sh shocked. Never yeah. heard that Probably before. Probably go contest another teammate's jumper. Yeah. <laughs> Surprising to no one, there's not like a, uh, a, a, a real leader there, Not at least not a vocal leader, and you're seeing those cracks now. So JD says the Pelicans. Nick, who do you say gets the four in that 4-5 race? Clippers. Um, as bad as they've been of late, we've seen them also be like this team in the West that you're like, Oh, no one wants to play that team. Like, what? It was like a twenty-game stretch where they like, basically didn't lose. Like, I, mm -hmm. I just think the the highs are high and the lows are low. And um, right now, it's super low. But it would not shock me if they just rattled off like twelve wins in their last fifteen games or something. Justin, I'm going Pelicans. I think b both these teams, you know, having lineups affected by injury is probably going to be the biggest factor into what actually determines this. But I think that the the Clippers are just they're hard to trust right now. And I think it could be like what you said, Nick, of like their their ceiling is very high. 
we may not get to see that till the playoffs. Taylor, I agree. The Pelicans are are eight and two of their last ten. Clippers are five and five. Seem to be unraveling at the wrong time, and there's not a lot of basketball left to be played. And I think the Pelicans have the tiebreaker against them as well. Uh, Same thing on this next one. Uh, That one didn't go as fast as I had planned, so let's make this one go faster. Suns, Kings, Mavericks, the race to skip the play-in and get to six. Who do you think gets that six seed out of Suns, Kings, Mavericks? Mavericks? I'm going to take the opposite approach of the last time. I took the team that's like variable. Um, I feel the Mavs and the Suns have a much higher ceiling than the, than the the Kings, but I just think they're more like steady. Like if I trust a team to actually take care of business, I think it's got to be the Kings to me. Yeah, JD, who did you say the Mavs? And Justin the, said the Mavs. The Mavs, yeah. Hey, the Kings. I, Red I Velvet. Old Kevin Herter is out now. What are they going to do? <laughs> He's been awful this year, so it's probably a good thing. This one's tough because each of the Kings and Mavs are only half game back of the Suns in the standings, and all three of those teams are seven and three of their last ten. I'll be the contrarian. I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, Booker and KD are able to weather the storm and, and keep the Mavs there at six. Or sorry, keep the Suns there at six. Sorry, Justin, what was your answer again? Mavs. I, Mavs. I so we got Mavs, Mavs. Mavs Kings and Suns. Interesting. The last one that's only really become a conversation this week. I feel like it was kind of on the fringes, but it's really been pushed to a conversation this week. And I've been reloading this page. Let me see if it's updated uh, since pre-pod. It has not, unfortunately. I've been looking at the playoff uh, probability Module, module on uh, basketball reference hasn't updated. But the who will miss the postseason entire league race is between the Lakers, the Warriors, and the Rockets. With a Warriors loss tonight, the Rockets are within one game. Rockets are nine and one in their last 10. Dubs are four and six. Lakers are six and four. Who gets on the outside looking in? Who's the team that misses? Houston Rockets. It's, it's yeah. a it's a fun story. It reminds me a bit of the Thunder last year. Mm. But you look at remaining schedule. Golden State has the fifth easiest schedule of anybody in the NBA remaining. Lakers are eleventh, and Houston has the eleventh hardest. Yeah, that's and that's I mean point. you have great to credit point. Houston for as good as they've been and like are making this conversation. But like you look at their recent stretch of games and like since since kind of early mid-march um i'm going to skip over some of the teams that are actually good but like just to, to think about how many horrible teams they played along the way just since since early march like this month um blazers spurs wizards wizards again bulls jazz blazers it's like they have beat some good teams in there like i'm not discounting that but it's been a lot of cakewalks too um, and then you look upcoming, like Jacob mentioned, you've got Mavs, you got Timberwolves, you got Thunder, you got Warriors, you got Heat, you got Mavs again, you got Magic, Clipper. It, it's it's about to get real. And if they do it, kudos to them. I just don't see this rate of success continuing. The only thing I would add there to what both of you said is this has largely been led by Jalen Green, who's been fantastic over the past, I mean, 10 games specifically, but even uh, a little before that. If I'm having to put all my money on Jalen Green, I'm not really feeling confident about that, given his track record. And so for that reason, I don't see Jalen keeping this up for this Rockets team moving forward. So does everyone say Houston is on the outside looking in? It'd be awesome if like the Lakers got eliminated, but uh, yeah, it's probably Houston. It's Steph just crazy that's a, that it's too. a conversation. Yeah. And yeah. for what it's worth, I also think Houston... But right now, I have zero percent faith in the Golden State Warriors. Agreed. They, they are they are washed. It's I mean, bad. I think I'd rather it's see Golden State in the first round if OKC keeps the one Houston? seed than Houston. Than even Houston? though I, I, even though I'd pick the Thunder in both. Like, <laughs> I know they have Steph. Yeah, you have a uh, short memory. Bad things happen when the Thunder go to Houston. Austin. <laughs> it scares me. True. Bad things happen when Golden State comes, comes to OKC. That's true. Yes. Yeah. 
I'm with Taylor though. Like neither one of those scare me in the playoffs. Right. I'm scared about every matchup. Who's with me? me. Yes. <laughs> Same. We all will be very anxious. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it's fun. It's fun to say. Oh, I think they're going to get past the first round when we're doing playoff preview. Every single one of us is going to be saying. Oh, Seven game series. Six, my hair is great. Thunder and seven. <laughs> yeah. The next playoff like right might like be the start of of my drinking career. That's that's, that's <laughs> next month, partner. Nice. I know you guys get ready, ready to learn whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the last three weeks of the season is going to be insane. Watching these four Western Conference races play out, though, um, I think it adds a lot of a. Uh, a lot of intrigue down the stretch. Speaking of intrigue, Justin, we've got predictions to talk about and make Ooh. before we get out of here. Why don't you give the folks an update on what's going on with these predictions? Do you notice how much more excited he is about this segment <laughs> the last few weeks? I am undefeated in the past three weeks, folks. <laughs> Zero losses. Wow. Uh, yeah. So Jacob's in first. Should I start betting? <laughs> <laughs> Jacob's currently sitting at 49 points after a perfect week. Also, with I've a never been to parlay week. in my life. <laughs> also, with a perfect week this last week, JD and myself, let's go. Who used that perfect week to chip away at Mr. Nicholas's lead, who sits at 42 points, Silva at 41, myself at 40, and Taylor at 38. Taylor I'm, pulling I'm off tanking. a quality late season tank here. That's right. Call me the uh, D- Detroit Pistons. I am tanking. Well, do I get a I first mean, round pick next year? I'm not sure there's an incentive. <laughs> there's no incentive. Yeah. There's no incentive here. You also but started still, off this season pretty well. So it's less Detroit, more. I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, that's. Don't know. You don't want to be Detroit. Detroit's just been trash for like Houston. a decade. Hopefully I go on a run here to end the season like Houston. There are there are 12 games to predict remaining on the schedule that makes me sad which means and like what 16 jacob jacob is up by points-ish? seven seven points yeah so there is that puts uh 15 points on the yeah. table yeah. unless jacob changes the rules which he probably won't because yeah. he's winning <laughs> we can uh, change them you, nice. every well, game is worth five points now <laughs> barring that <laughs> barring that 15 points to make up uh quite a bit of ground on jacob well can can we can we like whether we end it regular season and start a new one in playoffs or we continue it through the playoffs can we do it in the playoffs also 100 yes. percent. yeah yeah why don't we do some like mario party bullshit and everyone besides jacob gets like some extra points at the end it's a star <laughs> it's a star <laughs> traveled the farthest who won the most mini games nick most picked the most season, nick most nick. money ball l's yeah probably nick. there we go probably. That would actually be pretty interesting. Maybe we'll look into something like that. Analytics. I like it. Mm. <laughs> All right. We have four on the docket this week, gentlemen. The first one, the Thunder head down to the Big Easy to take on the New Orleans Pelicans on Tuesday night, as JD mentioned earlier in the show. No Brandon Ingram, uh, but there is another uh, thick boy that I got in trouble for <laughs> call- saying one that was is thicker hilarious. than the other. <laughs> Oh, on, I thought you were talking about the uh, the live podcast we did on Friday where you said yeah. Thick Boy on Thick Boy and a yeah. bunch of people walked in the door and looked over like... No, they walked in guys. when I said, one's always thicker than the other. And I was like, the context there is uh, very poor. Nick, <laughs> what is your prediction down in New Orleans? Uh, I have to make a confession. I You, you sent the request for picks kind of late and I was in the middle of doing something. So... Picks? I just... What? <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. for these, Never for mind. these, uh, I put, I'll, I'll get at the end. I just put random win loss in a certain pattern via DM. I have no clue who I was picking or what I was picking, <laughs> but since this was the first game of the week, I just put Moneyball next to it. So I guess Pelicans win Moneyball. All right. <laughs> Nothing like cramming before the test. JD, wow. what happens in New Orleans? Well, it's in the big easy, but this prediction sure wasn't. <laughs> I predicted a dub a W. <laughs> All right, Justin. Uh give myself a ding just for that joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the big easy, but this game won't be. That's an L, <laughs> partner. 
Taylor? I, I have the W. This Thunder team responds well after losses. Typically, I think they're going to win this one. I went with a dub as well down in New Orleans. The next night, they come home for a Sega Baba against the aforementioned Houston Rockets. And the Rockets keep the winning streak up in Oklahoma City. Taylor, what do you think? I took the L. Sega Baba, this team hasn't been extremely consistent, being the Thunder that down the stretch. Rockets are hot. I could see them dropping this one, which will suck for all of us. I think Taylor's getting a little desperate, making some uh, desperation Got picks here. <laughs> Got to. Swinging for the fences. Justin, what happens against the Rockets? They're going to get a win. And I'm so confident in this. It's my money ball. I Love think uh, we're going to get see what the Rockets look like when they play an actual team with a pulse. JD. Um, I think it'd be entertaining if the Rockets did get the nine seed. So I predicted a uh, the Thunder losing against the Rockets. Jeez. Nick. As the pattern goes, win, loss, win, loss. This one was an L. <laughs> <laughs> go back to the pattern. <laughs> I went with a money ball win against the Rockets. Wow. This could be a big one if they uh if they take That's an L. I took like, the L. I knew you guys take the L. Is, it might switch just three points. I should have I should have money balled this, but I did not. Three points. All seven. right. Friday night, the Phoenix Suns are in town to take on the Oklahoma City Thunder. Another home game. Justin, what happens whenever the Suns come to OKC? I'm going with a win here. Oklahoma City uh, obviously plays well at home this season, and I think, weirdly enough, like not a bad matchup for them. Okay, Nick? I think you know the answer. <laughs> We're back on the uh, the W side of the, uh, the pattern, correct. yes? That is correct. JD? Uh, so this is like... This was like the hardest four games to predict of the season for me for some reason. I just couldn't figure it out. So I started just picking with what I thought would be funny. Um, <laughs> so I predicted the, the Thunder win. because It'd be funny if the Suns dropped out of the playoffs or dropped lower in the standing. So a W, a money ball. Money ball. Dang. Money ball. Uh, Taylor. The Thunder going to lose at home on the Sega Baba versus Houston. They're going to respond well. With a night off in between, back at home, give me Suns money ball. Wow. Or sorry, <laughs> uh, uh, Thunder money ball against the Suns. <laughs> <laughs> I took w. a win against the Suns. The final game of the week, next Sunday before we come on the show, the Thunder go up to New York City to take on the Knicks. I went, I'll go first. I went with an L against the Knicks. Me Taylor, too. what do you got? I also have the L. Going up to the Garden, Knicks have been really, really good. I bet the L. I don't even like Gardens that much. JD, did you say L? I did say L. You don't like Gardens, like in general? No, just, what do they do for me? Nothing. I don't know. That's oxygen. Such a weird take. <laughs> I was about to say oxygen. <laughs> if you said, hey, do you want to go to the Garden? My answer will be no. Any Garden? Because it was Madison Square Garden or TD Garden. I would go to those two gardens. Jacob, not a fan of the Botanical Garden. No wow. KC. Noted. They're plants, dude. <laughs> Who have I not asked for this one? Justin, what, what happens in the garden? In the garden, Thunder get a win. They get a win. You what happened cowards? in the Garden of Eden? They, they are going to go, you know, Madison, Madison Square Garden is not even square. It's a rectangle. Just say the point. They're going in. They're getting a dub. Nick? I thought about that for a while, Justin, after you said that. I was like... <laughs> I went uh, regard not being square. Yeah, you're right. Went, when, it's because it's, it's, it's cause mine's it's, blown. It's because it's by Madison Square, but that's irrelevant. Yes. Yep. Thinking too deep. I went win loss, win loss. So this is a loss for me. I like really. Uh, I wonder if Nick did that process for just the entire season, how it would play out. I mean, not good because they're way better than 500, partner. <laughs> <laughs> and if you just Math. randomly like money balled each week, it would yeah. not be good. I'd probably be down at 38 points with Taylor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oof. Oof. All right, gentlemen, any thoughts before we get out of here? Um, no. Um, Bucks. 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 <laughs> 
our version of dog barking. We, we need two more. Come on, guys. JD and Taylor, give us one. I, I was waiting for Silva. I said it. Bucks. 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 Unbelievable. Thank you for tuning in to the Uncontested. The live stream, even after a crappy loss against the Bucks. Thank you. We still had a ton of people in here. So thank you guys so much for hanging out. Before you log off tonight, hit that like button, please. We mean a ton to us. Just in the podcast version or watching the YouTube video later. Thanks for checking us out. We really appreciate you. As the playoffs near, make sure to check back with the Uncontested for all of your Thunder coverage. We will be back. Not Tuesday night, because we don't podcast on nights before we do a weekly show. So we'll be back Wednesday to talk about the Pelicans and the Houston game. So join us then. Friday night, we'll be here breaking down the Phoenix Suns. And then, as always, next Sunday, 9 p.m. Central Time, we will be here hanging out after that Thunder versus Knicks in the not-so-squared Madison Square Garden. You guys have a great beginning of your week. We will see you Wednesday night. Until then, as always, books.